seen Birth of the Nation, for instance, you know, the thing that started this whole Ku Klux Klan thing, it just, it, it, you know, set all the, the white supremacists and whites get pretty to set them off. But D.W. Griffin wrote an, or did another film after that called Intolerance. It's even a, technically a much better film, but nobody watches that. But I've seen everything. So when I see all these films, I look at everything, I'm talking about black, black films, I know all the black films. 
foreign films, I mean, you know, Korean films, Japanese films, Chinese films, Swedish films, African films, oh man, I know films. There's one film, okay, there's one film people, I won't say sleep on, they don't really understand it. It's a film by a famous, a legendary, whatever you, those things, icon, whatever, um, filmmaker, he, well, he originally was from England, but he made his bones in, well, you know, famous in the United States. His name is Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, everybody knows Alfred Hitchcock. You know, Psycho and Spellbound and North by North, all that kind of stuff. But he did a revolutionary film, a film about revolution. He said, wait, well, it's a film about, film about, about Russia. Isn't that Burn? Marlon Brando did Burn. It's a revolution film, film about that. that. Uh, then, you got, of course, you got uh, uh, The Battle of Algiers. You know, see, Battle of Algiers, classic. That's a revolution. That was a really incredible film. So what could be better than that? There's no, no, no the film about revolution that's better than that. Those are real stuff. The film he did that's about revolution was The Birds. The Birds. He said, what are you talking about? Yeah, if we really look at it, stuff us off with these, 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 these I, don't, I don't want to say it like it, but these, this couple of these Europeans, you know, these colonies, they came and they, they got these two birds, love birds, love birds, birds of love. Like black people, people to love humanity. Got them in a cage, one short, and they went over to this island with the birds in the cage, and as they was going, other birds started to attack them. They didn't know why. The film goes on. The birds start beating up on the people. It was a revolution because the birds got sick and tired of being caged up and taken advantage of. I mean, they even bombed. They bombed. They got a gas station. They, the birds did everything. But here's the trip. Here's the, this is why I identify. So there was a lot of black birds that it took. But this is why I identify with. After the birds said, "Okay, we won." And they were taking over places, other places. This was in like the San Francisco Bay or something like that. After they take over, at the end, really, they actually let the cages, the white, the waters, the white people go. They didn't kill them. This is key. Because the reason why we have so much trouble is that white people think that if we take over, we, you know, the downtrodden, that we're going to do to them what they did to us. But that's not true because we have humanity. The problem is they are putting their principles of inhumane, inhumane things on us. And then they feel like, oh, well, if we don't continue, then, then you, know, you know, that's not what's going to happen. So actually, when I adapted this story, the first thing I said, the revenge of the chickens, it's not revenge. What I said, I'm thinking of that, not, not even white, black. I'm thinking about the downtrodden. The chickens are the downtrodden. The people, the, 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 the money people, these capitalists, these, these, I don't know, these manipulators, they call them the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Class war, that's what we got to get rid of. These people, these people who, who in the name of, uh, of um, liberation, they, they came and then all of a sudden now they're driving the big SUVs and they're doing to, you know, the downtrodden like the, they've always done, even they used to be downtrodden. You see? Okay, look, it's all confused. I don't want to get into it because I'm in such a good state because I'm doing it. Oh, one more thing, one last thing. This is, I want to say historic, this is a big bird, but this is only historic, you know why? This is only the second time that I'm actually directing an audio drama here in Africa. The first time was in the 90s in Dakar. Why well, shouldn't bridge that? Because we was doing, we were, because I wasn't sitting out, we was doing this audio drama, and the day we had my cast, I mean, the day that we was doing the audio drama, it's a quote that I was doing uh, the coming play by Larry Garrick, who his book, the coming play he was doing that. I had a lot of people from the Gambi in the play. The day that it happened, that's when the guys came to the guy's radio station, George Christensen, my main man, to his radio station and said, We're taking over the country. And that's what happened. In other words, there was a revolution while and so my cast, they just had to lay a frame what's going on because their country was just it was a coup. Cool. I don't think that's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, this is not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> However, it's the same principle, revolution. I just want to bring that on. Look, I, I didn't say that. You know what I mean? Anyway, this has been one of those dispatches from me, a very happy tea.
from the Panthers since taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm-hmm.